In my first video on epicyclic gear train, we have solved one example problem. In this video, we will solve two more problems from epicyclic gear train. First problem is, an epicyclic gear consists of three gears A, B and C as shown in figure. These are the three gears A, B and C. Gear A has 72 internal teeth. Uh, gear C has 32 external teeth. Gear B meshes with both e, A and C and is carried on an arm EF. This arm is this arm is EF and uh, it rotates about the center of A. So about this center, it is rotating with 18 RPM. If the gear A is fixed, so speed of A is given 0. So determine the speed of gears B and C. We have to determine speed of B and C. So given data, number of teeth on A 72, number of teeth on C 32, speed of arm 18 RPM and speed of annulus equal to 0. We have to prepare a table like this. Now there are three steps. Condition of motion. Entries are almost same for all the problems. Now revolutions of elements. Here in these columns you have to write all the elements of this gear train. First column must always be arm. And after that you have to write. You have to start from one gear. In adjacent column you will write the meshing gear. So I have started from C. So C is in mesh with B. So next is gear B. And now B is with uh, B is in mesh with A. Therefore, next gear is gear A. Now, first row arm is fixed, so speed of arm will be zero. So this is zero. And gear C is given. Next gear is given. Always we will give next gear uh, plus one revolution. So its speed is plus one. After now we can determine speed of gear B and gear A. The speed of gear B can be obtained uh, as speed of gear c multiply so here you have to write speed of gear c that is one multiply with number of teeth on c divided by number of teeth on b so tc divided by tb so one multiply by tc divided by tb now to determine speed of gear a what you have to do you have to write speed of gear b so this is the speed of gear b multiplied with Number of teeth on B divided by number of teeth on A. So this divided by this. This is what you have to do. TB divided by TA. External teeth of C is in mesh with external teeth of B. Therefore, direction of rotation of C and B will be opposite. So this is plus. Therefore, I have written this as minus. Similarly, now external teeth of B is in mesh with internal teeth of A. So, one external teeth when uh, mesh with internal teeth of other gear, then direction of rotation of both gears will be same. This gear A is also made negative because direction of rotation of A and B both are same. So, once you get this first row, second and third row are very simple to construct. In second row, you have to multiply each element of first row by x. So, x multiply 0, x multiplied 1, x multiplied this term and x multiplied this term. Now here TB and TB these two get cancelled. So what, what is remaining is TC by TA. So TC by TA multiplied by x. So in third row you have to add y in each entry of second row. So 0 plus y, x plus y, this term plus y and this term plus y. So once you have entered all these values, these are representing speed of corresponding gears or arm. So this is this term is speed of arm, this term is speed of gear C, this term is speed of B and this term is speed of gear A. Two conditions are given. Uh, speed of arm is 18 RPM. So speed of arm, so Y is equal to 18. This is what given. So Y is equal to 18 and NA is equal to 0. So speed of A is this term. So this term is equal to 0. So I have kept this term equal to 0. Now put this value of Y is equal to 18 here. TC and TA are known. TC is 32 and TA is 72. From this you will get value of X. So this value of X is obtained as 40.5. So once you get this value of X, you can calculate speed of gear C. Speed of gear C is X plus Y. So X plus Y is equal to 40.5 X plus 18. So you are getting 58.5 RPM. Now here you can see this is positive that means uh, we have taken uh, speed of arm or rotation of arm as positive there and NC is also obtained as positive value that means direction of rotation of arm and direction of rotation of C uh, the gear C both are same. 
So if arm is rotating in clockwise direction, then C is also rotating in clockwise direction with 58.5 RPM. Now to get speed of B, we have to use this term. So this is gear B, speed of gear B is this term. Now in this term, you have TB. Now number of teeth on B is not given. That can be determined from the geometry. From this geometry, you can see that radius of this A Radius of annulus is equal to radius of this sun gear, that is radius of C, plus 2 times radius of this B. So, from here to here is the radius of this annulus, which is equal to radius of C, plus diameter of B, which is equal to 2 times radius of B. So, whatever relation you are getting for radius, the same relation you will get for their number of teeth also. So, convert this equation into number of teeth. So, TC plus 2TB is equal to TA. From this relation, you can determine TB as TC minus TA divided by 2 and value of TA and TC both are known 72 minus 32 divided by 2 is equal to 20. So once you get value of TB, now you can determine speed of gear B. Speed of B is equal to here in place of X, I have written 40.5 TC 32 TB 20 value of y 18. So finally you are getting as value of b as speed of b as minus 46.8 rpm. That means direction of rotation of this b, uh, direction of rotation of this gear b is opposite to the direction of rotation of this arm. If arm is rotating clockwise then b is rotating in anti-clockwise direction. If arm is rotating in anti-clockwise then b is rotating in clockwise direction. And speed of gear b is 46.8 rpm. Now next problem is, in the epicyclic gear train shown in figure, I have not drawn figure, now I am going to draw the figure. The compound wheels A and B as well as internal wheels C and D rotate independently about the axis O. So there are two compound wheels A and B. Speed of A and B will be same because these are compound wheels. These are rotating about this center. Now there are two wheels E and F. There are two wheels E and F rotate on the pins fixed to the arm A. Now these are uh, rotating about this arm, it is, they are fixed on these two ends of the arm. Now you can see that this E, this E wheel is connected with B and this F wheel is connected with A. Number of teeth on the wheels are given. Uh, now other, let's draw C and D also, two internal wheels C and D. So C is having internal teeth, internal teeth and is in contact with this gear F. So it is in, uh, is in mesh with F. And similarly D, D is also having internal teeth and is in mesh with E. So D is connected with E and C is connected with F. Now we have to determine the speed of C. We have to determine speed of this internal gear C. If the wheel D is fixed, speed of D is given fixed and arm A rotates at 200 rpm clockwise. This is first case. And in second case, wheel D rotates at 200 rpm counterclockwise and arm rotates at 20 rpm counterclockwise. For these two conditions, we have to determine speed of C. For this, we have to prepare a table. So, this way you have to prepare a table. Again, we have three steps. Now, condition of motion, as I mentioned before, uh, these entries are almost same for all the, all the problems. Now, here you have to write names of all uh, names of all the elements of the gear train so all the elements name you have to write here starting with arm a so first entry will be arm so for always we will keep this first entry as arm after that i have started with gear a so i have written gear a now gear a and b both are having same velocity or same speed so you can write b also here make this entries clear i have i have drawn b separately so gear a now A is in mesh with F. So A is in mesh with F. Therefore next entry will be gear F. So that these two should be adjacent to meshing gears. Now F is in mesh with C. Therefore next entry is gear C. Because F and C are in mesh. Therefore these two are adjacent, adjacent columns. Now next I have written this B. B. So B is in mesh with E. Gear B is in mesh with E. So I have written gear E after gear B. So these two are adjacent columns and these two are meshing. Now E is in mesh with D. So E is in connection with B. E and B are connected. Therefore next entry is gear D. So these two are adjacent columns. Now we can write this first. We have to keep this arm A fixed. That means its 
speed we will keep as zero. So speed of arm A is zero, and we will give gear A plus one revolution. Once you get speed of A, you can get speed of F as speed of A multiplied by number of teeth on A divided by number of teeth on F. So T A divided by T F into this one. So one I have not written because multiplied by one is same value. And next is gear C, F and C are connected. So speed of C can be obtained by multiplying speed of gear F. This is speed of gear F. This is what I have written here. Speed of gear F multiplied by number of teeth on F divided by number of teeth on C. So T F divided by T T C. So this value in this way you will get speed of gear C. For gear B, as I have already mentioned, A and B are compound wheels. So speed of A and B are same. So whatever you have written in A, same you have to write gear B. So you have written plus one here. Now B and E are connected. So B is uh, B and E are connected. Therefore, speed of E is equal to speed of B, speed of B multiplied by number of teeth on B divided by number of teeth on E. T B divided by T E multiplied with this speed. So this is one. Now next last one is gear D. And again, gear D, speed of gear D can be obtained by speed of gear E, speed of gear E multiplied by number of teeth on E divided by number of teeth on D, T E divided by T D. Now here, sign what we have taken: gear A and F, external teeth of A in mesh with external teeth of F. So direction of rotation will be opposite. So one is plus, one is minus. Now external teeth of F is in mesh with internal teeth of gear C. So direction of rotation of F and C will be same. So this one is minus. Therefore, this must also be minus. External teeth of B is in mesh with external teeth of E. Therefore, direction of rotation is opposite. So this one is plus. So this should be minus. And external teeth of E is in mesh with internal teeth of D. And therefore, direction of rotation of both gears will be same. So this is minus. Therefore, this must also be minus. In this way, you have to write plus and minus. So once you get this first row, other rows are very simple to generate. For second row, what you have to do, you have to multiply it throughout with x. So I have multiplied in each element with x, multiplied x every every place. Now here, T E and T E both are same, so these get cancelled. So you will get T B upon T D, T B by T D multiplied x. Similarly, here also T F and T F get cancelled, so you will get x times T A by T C. So T A by T C into x. For third row, you have to add y. So here, when you add y, you will get y here, x plus y. This term plus y. This term plus y. This term plus y. This term plus y. And this term plus y. In this way, you get this final row. And this final row represents the speed of corresponding gears or arm. So this y is the speed of arm. So x plus y is the speed of gear A, and so on. So I have written only this third row because this is what we require. Now, what are the given values? So you can see number of teeth on A here, number of teeth fifty-two on B fifty-six, number of teeth fifty-six. E and F both are having same number of teeth thirty-six. Now we don't have number of teeth on C and D, so these two can be determined from the geometry. So you can see that R A, this A radius of A plus diameter of F, that means two times radius of F is equal to radius of C. So R A plus two R F is equal to R C. From this relation, you can convert this relation into number of teeth. Same relation you will get for number of teeth. So T A plus two T F is equal to T C. From this relation, you can determine number of teeth on C as 124. So number of teeth on C is 124. Now next is uh, for D, you can see that radius of B plus diameter of E. So radius of B R B plus two times radius of E is equal to radius of D. Convert this into number of teeth. So T B T B plus two T E is equal to T D. From this relation, you will get T D as 128. So number of teeth for all we have obtained. Now given conditions for first case, this case one, for case one, wheel D fixed and arm A rotates at 200 rpm clockwise. So this is arm A. So this is 200 clockwise. 
so these two are given 200 rpm and nd is equal to 0 so arm is 200 rpm clockwise that's why y is equal to plus 200 because it is clockwise and nd is equal to 0 where d this this is the speed of d so this is equal to 0 so put this value as equal to 0 now put value of y here and tb and td so you will get value of x so tb is this one td is this this is y from this you are getting x is equal to 457.1 once you get this 457.1 you can determine speed of c so speed of c is this term so speed of c you can obtain and c is equal to minus x pa by tc plus y so minus x pa by tc plus y is equal to in place of x write 457.1 TA 52, TC 124 which are already calculated plus this is Y 200. So you are getting 8.31 RPM. Now this is clockwise. So C is rotating in clockwise direction with a speed of 8.31 RPM in this first case. Now in case 2, in case 2 given condition is wheel speed, arm speed is 20 rpm, so arm is rotating with 20 rpm counterclockwise, that means this is minus 20 and D is rotating in 200 rpm counterclockwise, so this is also minus and D is minus 200. So put this value Y, speed of arm is Y which is equal to minus 20 and speed of D is this term which is equal to minus 200. So this term, this term is equal to minus 200. Now put value of Y as minus 20 here. And the value of TB and TD, this, this is TD and this is TB. So you will get value of X. When you solve, you are getting 411.43. So once you get value of X, again you can determine speed of gear C. Speed of gear C is minus X, this term, minus X, TA divided by TC plus Y. Put all the values, X value of X, value of TA and TC, TA and TC and value of Y. When you solve this, you are getting minus 192.5 rpm. That means in second case, C is rotating in anti-clockwise direction with a speed of 192.5 rpm. In this way, you can analyze an epicyclic gear train. Thank you for watching this video.